The next muscle is levator scapulae. And levator scapulae gets its name because it elevates the scapula, so it lifts the scapula up, it elevates it higher. It comes from the cervical vertebrae up here, the transverse processes. So if you feel on your client the side of their neck, these are the transverse processes sticking out either side of the vertebrae. And it runs all the way down to the very top of the scapula up here, this superior angle. Sometimes when you press this point, it's quite sore, that attachment point there. So it's a nice strap-like muscle running all the way from the cervical transverse processes all the way down to the top of the scapula. One of the problems with this muscle is if your client takes their head into a forward head position, if they lean their head forward, they're craning outwards, it acts like a horse's reins and tries to pull the head back into the midline. The next two muscles, these are part of your rotator cuff muscle group. And the way you find them is you need to palpate what we call the supraspinous fossa in here. So that fossa is a little hole, a dip, in the top of the scapula above the spine of the scapula. So to palpate for the spine of the scapula, which is this bit here, ask your client to keep their arm at their side and run your hands along the scapula to see if you can find the spine. And the spine runs from the medial border all the way along the acromion process at the end. So the first muscle we're going to put in is supraspinatus. And supraspinatus gets its name because it's superior, that means above the spine of the scapula. So we need to put it into the supraspinous fossa, which is that bit there. And a fossa is just a hole in anatomy that indentation, that wide indentation. So see if you can palpate, if you can feel that indentation superior to the spine of the scapula. And it runs from the supraspinous fossa underneath the acromion to the head of the humerus over there. And it inserts what we call the, the greater tuberosity, a little spot at the head of the humerus. So see if you can just draw your lines like that underneath the acromion to the head of the humerus. And you might not be able to palpate this spot itself because you've got the huge deltoid muscle over the top, but it's roughly there. Now the job of supraspinatus is it acts um, like a shopping bag muscle. And what I mean by that is if you abduct your arm, so ask your clients to abduct their arms, take their arms out to the side. It likes to work in this range, but it can of course go through the whole 180 degrees like that. But it likes to work in abduction around 20 degrees. And if you palpate, if you put your fingers into the supraspinous fossa and then get your client to actively abduct, get them to do it themselves, you may find that you can feel the muscle contracting in there. And one of the problems with the muscle is that its tendon runs under the acromion process to insert over here. So if you keep on abducting, you're going to squash the tendon repeatedly in that little gap. The, the muscle that works um, from the same, a similar part of the scapula is this one, infraspinatus, and that's named because it's inferior to the spine of the scapula. So find the spine of the scapula again, palpate this structure here, And then you're going to be drawing the origin 
in the infraspinous fossa, which is that bit there. And notice that it doesn't go all the way down to this is called the lateral border because there's some other muscles we need to put onto the lateral border, so you need to leave them some space. So once you've found the infraspinous fossa, draw your lines coming like this to the posterior side, again to the greater tuberosity of the humerus, right at the top of the humerus. An infraspinatus is an external or a lateral rotator of the humerus, so it turns your arms outwards like that. Every time you reach behind you, infraspinatus is working to externally rotate your arm, to laterally rotate your arm. So let's put in the two muscles that we've left space for. Here on the lateral border, the first one is teres major. So see if you can find the lateral border. You might have to palpate around this inferior angle. Come onto the lateral border. And the first one is teres major, and it's going to the front of the armpit, which you might not be able to draw. You'll have to just sneak your lines under your client's armpit like I've done there to show that it inserts on the front of the humerus. Teres means round in anatomy and this is a lovely chunky round muscle that goes into uh, the bicipital groove, a groove on the front of the humerus. So on the model here, here we've got two tubercles and there's the bicipital groove running on the front of the humerus down there. Teres major is not part of the rotator cuff, but its partner, teres minor, is. And if I put this one over there, if you look at this diagram, you can see that teres minor sits just above teres major there, coming from a very similar origin. So there's teres minor also on that lateral border. And obviously there'll be some variations between individuals. But this one is also going to the greater tuberosity. And on my diagram, it's perhaps a little bit too low. So I've just drawn it quite generally. So let's think about the difference between teres minor and teres major. Teres minor is an external or lateral rotator of the humerus. It's going to turn your arms externally like that, like infraspinatus. But teres major is going to the front of the humerus. So you can see it's actually sneaking its way to the front there. So teres major is an internal rotator of the humerus. It turns the arm inwards like that. And the majority of the population are going to be working their internal rotators because the majority are going to sit in internal rotation rather than to sit in external or outward rotation. Now, this next group of muscles, you don't have to draw all of these. I've just sketched on some of them. They form a big group of muscles called erector spinae, and there are some different groups. Um, you've got iliocostalis, spinalis, longissimus here. But what I want you to do is to just find the base of the skull here, the occipital bone. So palpate the occipital bone, and then draw a set of tram lines from the occipital all the way down on each side like this. So draw them all the way down, like that. So you end up with a kind of a tram line running all the way down. 